Right, hi guys. Some of you may know Noah, some of you may not, but if you do, then you know. If you don't, then um, Noah has been helping out with the social media, video editing, and just general stuff in the store for the last year and a half, half now. So yeah, we're just gonna have a little bit of a chat. It's Sunday, it's a, a nice afternoon, so we're just gonna have a little chit chat about stuff and just see what it leads to, and hopefully you enjoy listening to us chat shit. Nike, at the minute, are absolutely rinsing uh, the Jordan 4s. Um, I think in the last three months, there's been five, six, or maybe even seven different um, silhouettes. And there's stuff like Bread Reimagines, <coughs> Military Blue Remakes, um, are just sitting in stores and, yeah, basically going under retail, which a year or two ago definitely, definitely wouldn't happen. Um, yeah, what do you think is making that happen? Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not too familiar, but I think they've just, they've, they've rinsed it, and they, the stock levels are so high now. There's not that much um, uh, demand for them. I mean, look, this is a, this is a good shoe. Look, the, the colorways are nice. I'm, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the yellow, but I, it's not a bad shoe. Um, it's just a shame. I think their stock levels are just so high. And because ha how many, how many of their 1.3 million yeah, worldwide? I mean, crazy, crazy. Um, I think what they're doing, they've done it with the dunks. Obviously, dunks are really, really popular, reselling for loads of money. Uh, and they just rinse that many different yeah. colorways, that many different variations of the popular colorways. Um, that yeah, I think they have the power to sort of kill the popularity of a shoe. Maybe there is some strategy there where they're just sacrificing um demand for for for, for profits and revenue because i mean look what what's retail on those now 210 um i think the military blues were 190 right. the breads were 200 i think um but they've just bought out the oxidized greens yeah they bought a gs pair pearlescent pair out uh the pink and white mm -hmm. um so they're just even if you're a diehard jordan 4 fan Unless you're on 50, 60 grand a year, you're not going to be able to buy every single release no. that yeah, comes yeah. out. So I think it's a bit of a combination of them releasing so many uh, and the demand not being there, yeah? Because 1.3 million pairs, everybody that wants a pair has got a pair, I think. So I think the initial quick flip reselling where you can buy something and flip it for 60, 70 pound profit mm. are sort of gone now. You have to be more clever with what you're buying. Yeah. You've got to sit on it for a while. Um, we like the bigger size breads now are going for 260, 270 market. Mm. So they are rising. And I think when winter comes, they will go up. Summer comes, the industrial blues will go up and the metallic golds. Um, but yeah. These, as you said, like a year ago, two years ago, oh my God, they would have been two, three times. Every Straight time. off the bat. Yeah, yeah, yeah three. I think we were selling photon dust when they came out for over 300 pounds. And, and they, they really went up. They, they shut up, didn't they? Yeah, they were shifting. Yeah. But, and um, like SB fours, I mean, all of these, like these are good colors. I mean, I'm not sure about the, the the first two, but but if you look back at Pure Money's, yeah. Pure Money's just a white shoe with a silver Six, tag. Seven. I think they were going 600 at one point. I think they're a bit lower now because of the market, but yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. But I suppose it's good for the real sneaky heads because they can get the Jordan fours. They can get you can get most stuff now that you want. I think unless it's a a real good collab. Um, I don't know what can I give an example of uh, of the Balvins. Mm -hmm. Both of those colorways came out and instantly selling for four hundred and fifty yep. pound. Yep. Um, well, they we can talk about that because they. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the retail price that Jay Balvin did on those, the black pair, where it was like twenty seven uh, grand. Yeah, but he gave a discount code to certain followers yeah. or something. Like I think that. it was in order to prevent bots and resellers. <coughs> Um, well, but hope, that was really like I've never seen that before. That was a really good. Idea. I hope some of the botters did uh, actually <laughs> set cash and spend grand. twenty-seven grand. That oh, the look on their faces uh, would have been great. But it's really I, I like when when people do that. Yeah. I, I mean, look, there's if you look at I don't know Clint or Culture Force kind of banning um, or not banning, but but having a strong preference against resellers. They're kind of going against what they they started and what their word was. Which, what, which I'm not what sure. What they're doing, what Culture Force is doing, reselling. He's reselling, isn't he? So yeah. it's it, we can. That's a whole other topic. But I think that that there's a conflict there, and I'm not a huge fan of of kind of going against how they started, especially Clint. Like you he know, went on reselling the... was what started his brand. It's what started you know getting the money to start his brand. So it's interesting you say that though, because I spoke to um, Hugo Beats about this, and 
I, I put that standpoint across where he'd done that course with Virgil. He'd done two of them, I think. And then he got on the back end two pairs of the Chicago's that he sold and then yeah. funded his brand. But he could, sort of came from the standpoint where maybe he thinks that um, he maybe wants it to be available and affordable yeah. for everybody. And yeah. that's maybe his standpoint that he doesn't like because obviously if you've got a brand and you want everybody to wear it, you want it to be affordable for the masses. I suppose when resellers are coming in buying your stock and then making it unaffordable for some people mm -hmm. that want it, yeah. Um, then yeah. But I think the true diehard Cortez fans know that the Cortez drop stay, it goes on there and sits there. Mm. Most of the stuff sits there till the next does day. There, yeah, does that stuff, you can probably answer this, does that stuff have much resale value now? Because I know obviously, you know, a year, two years ago, I mean, it was unreal. I think select pieces, and I think obviously with this store being in Cambridge, I think a lot of people don't know where to get the stuff from, and yeah. it's just like a convenience thing. Yeah. But I think the retail on the t shirts is £40, we sell them for 60 65 mm -hmm. depending. Obviously, after VAT tax, we're making about 12 quid a t shirt, so we're not ripping the back end mm -hmm. out of it. But obviously, with the overheads that we've got, we do have to make a little bit of money to be here for you guys to come into the store and be able to see this stuff and purchase this stuff. Um, That's something we can talk about, and and we've seen as you were saying we we're talking about this earlier like you know mr brown's has just closed down london sneaker club a big one has just closed down and that was that was really unexpected to me and and i was i was talking to <coughs> yesterday it's almost like um i mean I'm, I'm not too familiar with them but they're nice guys yeah, yeah, yeah. and 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 it felt a bit sad almost because they've obviously you know they're still doing they're still going to do really well and and the team will definitely decrease a bit because you know they don't have a store to run but it's sad to see a store like that. I mean, look, they're in Soho. It's, it rent is hard. Yeah, but, I bet their overheads are crazy. But still, I mean, some some stores that we can see how how the the state of the market now will treat will treat their brands and will treat this store and will treat all the other stores. Yeah, I think you sort of had have to adapt to the market since we opened and just the industry in general. There's a lot more focus now on the used part of yeah. the industry because. You can get a new shoe for half cheap, the cheap, third cheap. of the price you can get a brand new shoe for. Yeah. So I think there's a lot more people buying uh, used. Um, but obviously in store, we do have a selection of both. But that uh, coupled up with um, just the the, stock, the market, like everything is so down to what it used to be. Yeah. Um, it is really a buyer's market at the minute. Um, but we've we are taking steps to counteract this and we we're going on we're gonna um work on set margins um we're gonna concentrate on you got trying to get revenue from youtube tiktok to cover the overheads we have to then be able to give people more affordable prices mm. uh, my dream's always been to to be a community shop and be part of the culture because I, I collect shoes um <coughs> you as you know i pay resale for shoes yeah, yeah. so i feel the pain of it as well mm. but it's part of the culture yeah like you've got if if you want shoes that you don't want you've got to go for other shoes to then sell to make your money to buy the yeah. shoe you want so you just got to play the game but i understand with the overheads we have the flices are a little bit inflated but that's just how it is, it is. And, and and the thing is i think it's very easy to, for, for people to you know cut, be on the high street and come into the store and see the prices that are so high and there's a real stigma, especially in this market, around around high prices. And it look, I, I understand it. I understand why people would be like, okay, this is just a rip. This is awful. But yeah. at the end of the day, you've got to understand how, how a business works. And you know, you've got rent to pay. You've got you, you've got staff to pay. Right. You've got bills to pay. You you know, you're paying. You're effectively almost paying resale prices for these shoes anyway. Yeah, and yeah. so. And so you, you've got to remember, you, you as a, as a buyer, you've got to see it from the perspective of someone who is coming to support the business as opposed to just trying to buy and get a deal on shoes. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. that's just how it is. And, and uh, you know, <coughs> definitely, I don't think, I think online sales don't help that. I think, you know, if you look at big um, online resellers, like, I mean, Culture Force is one, you know, he doesn't have a store to run, he doesn't have stuff, I mean, he has some stuff, but he doesn't have, you know, Massive huge, overheads. huge overheads. So he can charge, you know, a lot lower prices. And um, it's easier for, 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 for online places like that. And, that's why you know retail is in general i think actually i think retail is slightly decreasing but it's a constant but, battle of online and retail yeah, yeah but if people don't understand if they don't support these retail stores then we're 
eventually we won't have retail yeah. stores. Yeah. And I think that's bad, and for the culture, and for the community. Because I love collectors coming in, having a chat, talking about stuff. It's the community aspect. Yeah, 100%. yeah. But it's a bit of a hard one trying to have that community aspect and run the business and make yeah. it profitable at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's why I want to venture out into these social media platforms to try and create more revenue mm -hmm. so then we can cover our costs and give people more affordable prices and be known for that at, at the same time still making some money. On that topic of this is slightly uh, on a slight tangent, but I do want to talk about it. We like a tangent. It. We like the, a tangent. I, I don't want to talk too much about him because he seems like a really nice guy and he gets a lot of hate. But I do want to talk about Cooper May briefly. There's a massive conflict there when he's doing these big promotions for these fake companies and he's act like you know strong advocate for fake clothes and he's then he's then in, going think, and he? promoting <laughs> these these shoe companies. Sorry, these sorry these resellers that do um, use shoe sales and and. And brand it. He'll be doing brand deals for people who do legit shoes. And and I think for those companies, I think I understand the publicity and and Cooper Moe's doing very well. I get that. But I, at the same time, do you really want to be promoted by someone who is a very advocate strong for advocate fake shoes. for fake shoes? I think I I understand it. I get it. But I think there is there is a um a big conflict there. And I think for him, he's I think. This is just not that he's going to see this, but I think it's it's a thing that he should probably be conscious of. That Choose he which still way has, he wants to go. He has a go. brand that he his personal brand he has to uphold. Oh, he's got a personal brand. Well, no. Oh, no, you mean his, the his name is his a brand, name? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's important for he does have a brand as well, but I, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you think he should me. do? Choose one lane and stay in that lane. I sort think of he thing. should just <laughs> you should ditch the fake shoes, even yeah, though yeah, he's yeah. getting the hundred twenty grand a year, whatever it is. I think he should just ditch that. And, and, and focus on building a, a brand that can be taken seriously, as in his personal brand. Yeah. Because I don't think promoting fake shoes... I mean, look, Panda Buy just got raided. But I'm sure are, in America now, in, in there's, the people, there's people being arrested and prosecuted yeah, for yeah, doing what he's yeah. doing. And he is so public about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so risky. And I think there was a clip I saw, maybe it was on the the Culture Force thing, of him saying that, you know, his teacher was saying that he was going to get arrested or in trouble with the police. And, and look, I, I don't know what... The UK law how, on that is. How but... the UK laws are going to change around it. But... At some point, seeing how public he is about it, it might come back to bite him. And is is the money worth it? I don't think These so. big brands, mate, they've got endless pockets. If yeah. Nike wanted to do something... Huge Chinese companies. Yeah. I mean, they're just... Look, there are big concerns around um, are these are these brands connected to criminal organisations and essentially just laundering money through them. But it's... And look, there's no, there's no doubt that these companies are doing big numbers and a lot and look, at the end of the day they're kind of middlemen for the factories mm. that want to stay anonymous and get more money and i'm and i'm sure there'll be a big percentage of those factories that actually make the real shoes and then are just somehow unlawfully taking the designs and, and selling them for cheaper with cooper may though i don't know if this is true because i don't really watch the kid a lot but i'm sure at the start of his journey he would wear all the reps and stuff that he bought yeah but i'm Looking at it now, I'm sure because he's got he's making the money and stuff. Yeah. He's actually buying real items and not wearing that's, a that's, fake. That's the thing. I think <laughs> it, it, as he's as he's got more money, <coughs> all of this money is then going into buying real stuff. And so, what he's saying he's, about the fakes is it, that it doesn't make, doesn't sense. make sense. And 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 I understand that his audience is essentially the same as him. There, there. It's a younger Young audience kids, that yeah. that don't have as much money to buy the real stuff. And I understand that then you know just to buy, spend, you know, 10 pounds and maybe 15 pounds, including shipping on some Cortez 95s is a good deal. But you've got to think, and I understand, you know, 90% of people don't care about the ethics of it and stuff like that. But you've got to think about, um, for Cooper, I think he has to be very conscious of um, just slightly being careful because I feel like he's got so deep into it. I'm slightly worried that it's going to... And longevity for him, because obviously if he does keep going down that road and something does eventually happen legally, yeah, then it sort of stops yeah. him in his tracks. Whereas if he sort of transitions now away from that into Cause normal fashion content creating, I'm sure he's got a big enough following. And that is where... what he is doing. Don't yeah, get me wrong. Yeah. Like he's, he's, you know, he's trying his hand at that and, and his engagement's quite good. Maybe for the wrong reasons. I'm sure his but dad's got a massive following. His dad, well, yeah, but that's, that's how, that's they, how they all got really popular. Like yeah, his dad yeah. was making food content, and then he got really popular. Now he's as, <coughs> as Big. popular as his dad. But fair play. You know, he's, look, he's a nice guy, and I watched the Culture Force thing, and I, f I do feel bad for him because he's getting so much hate. Oh yeah, I don't think he should get any of the hate. No, part. he's just a kid making money, doing yeah. what he's doing, um, and he's obviously a young kid, so 
Um, I'm sure his parents and stuff will guide him and stuff yeah. like that. But yeah. all the best to you, mate. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Doing what he you're just, doing. Just be, uh, just, he's got to be careful, I think. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Right then, so I'm going to go through a few of the relevant brands, in my opinion, at the minute. And um, just, yeah, get your opinion quick few bullet points my opinion and then we'll move on to the next one so list of the brands are going to go through supreme palace merch merch cortez yeah. broken planet all of that stuff so we'll start with supreme um okay oh what, what, what are the kind of things you said i don't know what do you think they're okay. relevant do you oh. think they're washed do you think they're starting to come back a little bit or how do you feel where they are in the scene at the moment um because they, they go up and down i suppose don't very they up and down. in and out and sort of thing they I, I, are they still relevant i think that's definitely they're definitely still relevant they always will be yeah but i don't think they execute very well i think a lot of their products pretty average mm -hmm. um there's maybe <laughs> an odd product that's all right i mean the the, the clark's collaboration was what average. did you think of the Mason Margiela one scenes as you were like sort of in um, that high fashion sort of thing? Uh, <laughs> it was it was interesting. I think it's nice to see Margiela do, you know, because they just did the Sol Solomon collab and, and Margiela's definitely doing a lot with with the other brands that aren't in high fashion. Mm. Um, and they're one of the few brands that are doing that, um, which is kind of... Is it risky? It's not risky, but it's it's bold for them, I think, because a lot of them are so heritage. They're such heritage brands, they wouldn't do collaborations like that. I mean, you know, we just saw the LV collection with Tyler. That was really good. You know, Sick. some of it was really cool. Super Tyler-esque mm. and, and Tyler's aesthetic. When Whenever there's a collab, it carries on so well. Um, but, you know, the, the, it was all right. It wasn't anything crazy. Like, it was just pretty average. I The, the only thing that was all right was the, the Margiela wallet, I think. But that was seat wallet. Yeah, but it was like it was fabric. It was really weird. <laughs> I don't um, think it wears very well. No, it's not a practical no, product sort not. of thing. Um, um, but it, you know, it wasn't that good. I mean, what do you think about it? It's not my sort of thing. I think the hoodie looked like a tin man hoodie. Well, the hoodie, the the what, which one? The it looked like a tin. Looked which like, one was that? They, I think they did it. Did they do it in two different colors? It was like the box logo hoodie, was but it was like, like a shiny. Sh yes, looked sort of yeah. tin esque. Because well, they did. They did the classic um, Margiela one with the the one through six or the one through twelve or I can't remember what numbers it was, but the classic Margiela one, um, which is just kind of the standard kind of thing. I think that was a bit lazy, and we can talk about the Supreme Cortez collaboration that happened as well because we'll, we'll get onto that. We'll, we'll get, get onto, onto that. Yeah, we've got some massive tangent. Um, but yeah, no. What what do you think about Supreme? I think it's a bit of a staple in the street where like it's been around forever. Um, I think you're right with the creativity thing, but I think for them to do a collab every week, mm -hmm. like they do, it, it's hard to sort of make everything they do a banger. And that I've, is that. Sorry, I'm interrupting here, but I'll, very quickly. But I think that is what is saving them slightly. It's the relevance. Yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. Karen. But yeah, they do. They, they, like they'll do a motor uh, motocross collaboration mm -hmm. with Fox. Yeah. But that's only really going to appeal to motocross. Yeah fans yeah so i think they do touch on loads of different areas and like you say that's probably why they are relevant because they've had so many different avenues that they could yeah. go down yeah. and stuff like that so yeah i think they come in and go out i like certain pieces that they do certain pieces i don't like but um yeah for but me. it's what we will talk about palace now yeah so it, it's a similar thing with them like a lot of their collaborations are really random right they did the barber collaboration they did um they did the f1 collab obviously you know that they, they yeah. sponsored f1 and <coughs> it's I think a lot of it is just good publicity it's good PR but then um, some of them like the Avisu one I thought slapped yeah yeah but that I mean they've always done the collab with Avisu is always they've always been pretty good um, but it's good to just see a British yeah, brand doing yeah, yeah, so yeah. well within that space yeah. so for me yeah uh, Palace I, I don't, don't do I own any Palace I don't think I do um, but yeah again it comes down to that appreciating something it's British um, so yeah I like it. Um, what else now? Cortez. Cortez. <laughs> average. Really average. Very average. And and this is what happened. This is what happened with Supreme and Palace as well. They become less of a brand for, for, for the clothes and more of a brand for the money. They've become commercialized yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you just the designs become so average. And, and this is the thing I've always struggled with Clint, I think, more recently is... He, because it's been doing so well, he just doesn't seem to be doing much for the brand. 
And that might be unfair and that might be wrong, but what he's posting on social media is he's always traveling around and, and you know, going to parties and he seems like he's slightly just... Um, Coming more about him. Sure, but he's this is his moment to kind of <coughs> relax a bit and take his mind <clears throat> off the brand when it's kind of in its peak. Mm. And I think that's the wrong time to do it. Mm. So he's just letting his team just do do whatever. Mm. Um, and I don't, I, I don't like that because there's just, it seems like he's kind of, the money's been almost a motivation. I'm not saying it has. I don't know what his 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 ethos was, but it just becomes like as soon as he's got the money, he's gone off and just relaxed a bit and let his team do the, do its thing. For me, I I've never really wore the brand. I do own a couple of the pieces, and I'll speak about why I do own a few of the pieces in a minute. But um, yeah, just the the contradictory terms like how he started his brand was by reselling a couple of pairs of off white Jordan yep. ones and then how much he hates resellers um i, I get that because maybe he wants his brand to be available to everyone for the retail price but then again if it wasn't for resellers buying his stuff i don't think a lot of his drops would have sold out no so it's sort of a, a two-edged sword but i think as his brand's grown as well he's sort of become a little bit arrogant um, this is obviously just my personal views, but um, yeah, and the crotch logo thing, I, don't, I just don't get why you'd want next man looking at you. But you that, that's like trends. Like I know, think ice cream started in their bil uh, billionaire. BBC did yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are so many other brands since who have obviously copied. Timeless them. went that sort of way with yeah. their, their. So many brands. Have yeah, done that. so many brands. Cortez have done a lot for for the, for the the UK culture. Definitely. Yeah, hundred. That that's one thing that I do do appreciate. They they've got the British streetwear culture name out there and i think he's marketing even oh, though I just even that. though i don't like yeah. him the marketing is crazy yeah. Yeah. uh and they've done so well with that um but yeah uh the supreme cortez club you wanted to touch on that um lazy in my so opinion disappointing. <laughs> lazy like really disappointing but apparently and they only had three days to make that happen oh come on wait but i just that's like that's that's so that's such a bad excuse like i understand three days fine whatever but how do you even get to that point they're both superior especially is a very well established brand yeah. cortez is you know they've got a big team now you do not arrange a collaboration and finalize it in three days this is not how and that execute works it. not how that works nah. you maybe there was something to do with the timing but you know i would rather for them to have not the delayed the release maybe there was something to do with you had to release it on that yeah, day maybe, so maybe do it next year yeah. right maybe spend the year to actually make a good collection and make it good rather than just just it's boring it's so boring it was lazy and, I thought and you know when I don't know what the relevance of like all the writing on the back actually is I'm not too sure I'm not sure. sure what it was I need to look maybe we've missed something yeah, on that yeah. but yeah just the the, the the logo and the supreme forever whatever it says really boring yeah and then um, they, they they released the t-shirts online so there's a lot a lot of stock of them uh, yeah. I know one of my suppliers copped 140 240 <laughs> that I remember reseller, reseller to yeah. reseller yeah big up the lads um, but the hoodies they only actually dropped at the they done a live like find where we are yeah um, but because of that uh, the double XL, they didn't have any available because I think they gifted all the security guards items. Yeah, and they're and all then, huge. Yeah, they're all huge. <laughs> and then the XL, I think there was only three to five available. Right. Um, so no stock at all. Yeah, considering so that, how many people have So that, I think the XL ones now are selling between six and seven hundred pounds for a hoodie, which is absolutely crazy. And then obviously the smaller sizes, mediums, large are going for around four, four fifty, which is crazy because it's just a standard Supreme hoodie. With so the boring it's really i mean and i find with the supreme hoodies they're heavyweight decent quality but as soon as you wash them they go so stiff and not like rigid what cortez ones or supreme supreme ones? okay yeah and I, I, for me i have to spray with a fabric softener before i yeah. and to bring that nice soft feel yeah. back of you feel like you're like stuck yeah. in a rigid it's like crisp yeah hoodie which i don't know but yeah yeah uh broken planet okay um uh i like seeing what Indre and what's the other guy called? I can't remember. But I, I like following the the owners of, of Broken Planet. Their story is good, I think. How yeah, they started and, the brand in lockdown and. I mean, <coughs> it's almost like you know accidental luck. I think. Or sorry, accidental. Right place, right time. Per, exactly. Right and situation. They weren't designers, and they still aren't really. And the thing I really well, like about know, them. Can you say that they're not designers? Where they've 
done what they've done. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's unfair. But 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 if you're but if you're talking about like their backgrounds and stuff, there wasn't initially. Not, no, you know no. exactly. But but I'm talking about now the stuff they're doing now. They're heavily involved with the development of the stuff, but they have designs that do the do the develop. Sorry, do the development. Okay. Stuff. That's my point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the the thing if if we compare Broken Plat and Cortez, basically two super relevant brands at the same time, super popular. Both of them have peaked, or are peaking. I definitely and think Broken Plat. I think Broken Plat's peaked. peaked. I 100%. think so. Um, Slow, but, it's slowing but, down a lot. But, I, but if you if you look at the amount of effort that's going into the owners, that's being put in by the owners, Clint is doesn't seem to be putting in much. But both Indre and, and the other guy, I can't say that, but both the owners of Broken Planet are putting so much effort into developing and they're working so hard. Yeah, yeah, you and can it's see so, that. So obvious. Yeah. Um, and so from I and I'm not a fan of either of them. I'm not a fan of Broken Planet, but they seem to be innovating and working really hard on new pieces. Yeah. And I think now we're starting to see the the lag of 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 the the onset time of um these new pieces that have been developed and innovated coming coming on like yeah. Indre, massive um advocate for like for for girls and women and so that she obviously you know they did the Stargirl collection which yeah. was big thing for girls and and obviously they kind of were lacking in the female representation in the brand um but i think they're, innov- they're definitely innovating for sure i, feel I still a, think it's average i though. feel a lot of these brands now are sort of they start off with like cortez and these they start off with one product but they sort of i feel like cortez now is starting to try and go into like the yep. denim and the yep. high a little bit higher yep. fashion similar with trap star as well i don't know why they're trying that because i just think what are they doing they've tried to sort of say that their brand trap star is like a trap you're a trap star within the universe rather than what we all know it is trapping. it's like trapping yeah. and yeah. that sort of thing so yeah. i think they're trying to come away from okay. that and go into <laughs> that's really weird denim and more really higher yeah. yeah 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 which i don't think and i think trap star i used to love trap star like that sort of the brand because that's where I sort of came from that urban street yeah. culture. Yeah, it identifies for a really strong culture. And it was yeah. nice when it was exclusive and mm-hmm. you'd wear a tracksuit and n- not very many people would have it. But when they started rinsing the designs and they sort of, like you said, they sort of felt like they didn't care about the exclusivity mm-hmm. and yeah. the brand anymore. They just wanted to care about money. Yeah. And then the fakes come along with that. So then you don't know, you're looking at people and you see more fake than yeah. genuine. So for yeah. me, when that happens to a brand, I sort of don't want to wear it anymore. Mm-hmm. And I don't wear the trap star anymore, which is a shame really. But I think the Broken Planet, their their stuff's good quality. I don't like the sizing. So I have to go XL instead of what I would normally wear medium or large. Because a lot of it's cropped. And, yeah, yeah, and then washing it. A lot of the puff print tends to, the color can, tends to come away after two, three okay. wears. Whereas yeah. that for me then, I won't wear yeah. it. And yeah. when you're paying a hundred pound retail, maybe 150, 160 resale on a product, that should never happen to me. No. Um, but I feel like it's had its sort of peak with the resale. Don't get me wrong, it's still moving, but yeah, they've sort of had their day, I feel, with, with the, the well, peak reset. I, I actually think, I would almost disagree, actually, okay. because they've definitely peaked. Like, this has happened, and they're now coming down a bit more. But from seeing the products they're developing and, and how much they're innovating and trying to... to progress kind of really develop well to be fair i do think fair, this yeah. is going to happen again yeah um, because they are sort of go, trying to go into that i don't know it sort of me goes from like streetwear to like into the fashion world at the well, bottom it's, level it's, sort it's, of thing if you know what i mean it's it's creating new silhouettes and developing new products yeah. rather than just doing a hoodie that has different designs and on just it. sticking and with that's that. the thing that's the thing that gives um the, the, the <coughs> I think all these bre- these streetwear streetwear brands mean like lack longevity is because they're they're doing a t shirt or a hoodie which has different designs and mm. they're changing the designs. If you compare that to high fashion and and designers who have a kind of subtle um, uh, design aesthetic and design eye, uh, their their stuff has a lot more longevity than this stuff does because all of this stuff is very trend based. It's very and samey, samey, exactly. samey, samey as yeah. well, isn't it? And so if you if you look at you know the the even their even brands basics like the Broken Planet basics still has the Broken Planet logo on it. Like a lot of people would still wear the T-shirt if it was blank, mm. you know. And 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 more blank stuff has much more longevity than, than anything else. Yeah, I agree. Because with that. it's you can't identify it as the brand unless you truly know the brand. Um, so that's I think the issue with with 
streetwear brands longevity and that's why a lot of them just you know they, they peak and they and they fall but what yeah. do you think of some of the up and coming brands like what did you say i don't really follow okay the so mersha mersha mertra mertra are i mean look they're doing unbelievably and <laughs> the amount of, i don't even want to know how much money they're making i mean it's disgusting they're some of these <laughs> and they are they are a perfect example <coughs> are they british i don't really know it's much australian about. i think oh australia yeah, it's an australian guy but they're heavily, obviously, heavily influencing like UK culture. Um, but they're a perfect, perfect example of influencer marketing. The influencers, are, the, the influencers are, are what have built the brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I like their, so, um, their. Is it the ski fleece they've done? It like reminds me of like the fleece. ACG. Yeah. But obviously, it's cropped, and I don't like You're that. But you know, the influencers are, are what have built Mertra. And they're doing, they're doing really well. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the brand, but it's I, I can't fault it. So what brands are you a fan of then, mate? What what um, what are you wearing at the moment? If it's at not the moment, your own brand? So I, in terms of what I'm wearing, it's a lot, I've sold a lot of my clothes because yeah. a lot of it's just going back into the brand. But in terms of what's kind of catching my eye, um, <coughs> I'm a huge fan of, I mean, I don't think you'll know them, but there's a designer called Yaku Stapleton mm -hmm. who is like relatively young and he's an unbelievable designer. Um, other brands like um they're a, they're a female brand predominantly but like the row i'm a big fan of and their new collection's really nice but like stuff that's like boring to most people but um you never know mate no people, of course, are, people of course. are interested yeah yeah, in yeah, it. yeah yeah but i'll pull up some photos of some of their stuff um but it's like there are a lot of um so would you say these are like brands that are emerging and stuff like that well or... the row is kind of quite well established but yeah. yaku stapleton is definitely emerging he won the l'oreal prize of like 2023 or something like he's youngish okay. um but uh what other brands it's good to have margella of course like it's good I... to have a perspective from someone who's obviously young and yeah. following the fashion because yeah. i'm a bit of a dinosaur now <laughs> i wear nike ralph Lauren, north face yeah but even you know still I mean? like i don't think there's enough younger people into fashion that are like um, publicizing their stuff yeah, yeah. like i think there's a huge oversaturation of of kids my age who are doing the same content yeah, and yeah, the same yeah. wearing the same stuff and there's like there's a i do appreciate people who are trying to kind of venture and, and feel comfortable in their own stuff and and <coughs> looking to other other brands and 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 I'm, I'm a big fan of japanese brands at the moment um i was i was in this store in in um in East London. He's, he's not in Japan at the minute. The lucky he's going. Guy. He's going to Japan. That guy. <laughs> and, uh, the yen is like finished at the moment, oh, so you mate, can get stuff, stuff so, so cheap. Bape's like half the price of yeah, what it is yeah, in the yeah, UK. Yeah. Yeah. Like TNs are a hundred pounds retail. It's unbelievable. So that's so, definitely on my list. After seeing the baggies TV there, because they did they go to Japan. They went to Japan. What they did, we found really interesting. They sort of documented all the sick stores they went into. Yeah. So if you was going there, you could sort of watch their video. Yeah. And sort of take out all yeah. the work of like going there. But the amazing thing about Japan is there are so many like vintage stores and archive designer stores that sell such cheap stuff. I mean, and they amazing. were saying there's stuff, there's places you'll be walking to a place that you found on Google, and on the way to that you'll store, find so many you'll stores. find four or yeah, five yeah, yeah, that are yeah, not yeah. even on Google. A lot of them are just, really just random, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And he's like, they're the best ones where you'll find all the gems and, and well, yeah, I, I, that's in Japan one place I need to is go. It's like now. unbelievable. I mean, you if you go, you'll you'll. Um, I think they're like in the future. It's ten years, aren't they? Well, it's interesting. I think the culture is just is a lot more different. Sure, like the fashion in Japan is crazy, and and Japanese fashion is is just. Don't forget you, like when these two are fucking fashionista superstars. <laughs> remember who put them together, and you remember. <laughs> you know who what it is? Flan is what genuinely. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for Flan, and it's just true. Like, I I came into Flan's. It was like end of twenty twenty two. Just a random one, weren't it? So I said to you like. Because I'd seen some of your content and yeah. I wasn't a huge fan. I was like, right, I think, I think we can make this you a bit better. You need me, basically. <laughs> and, you know, I started doing stuff and it's gradually improved over time. And obviously it's been very consistent. And 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 I, I wouldn't say I'm particularly satisfied with with what it's at now in terms of just like consistency and, and, and quality wise. But look, that's just how it is. It's how it happens. It has to work like that. And I've obviously tried to get people in and I'm learning how to edit myself now, but I just always come back to like, they don't, they're not as good as you. So I'm always trying to find someone that's as good as you, yeah. but I can't. So I have to sort of wait for you to be back on the seat <laughs> to help me. But no, it is going to train me up now. He's going to train gonna me. He's going to teach me all the tricks of the trade. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully, 
going forward we can be consistent because we've built this this space now and we have got big plans so hopefully um you you still i know you'll still be a part of it mate when you can help out and stuff like that even if always you big. yeah always yeah. um but yeah I put them two together. <laughs> no, but it's true. It like, true, Ant, yeah. Ant came in, like, I was working there and it was summer and then Ant came in as a kind of, um, he was doing work experience and he came in as like LV hoodie and Travis Scott's the little hype beast that he is. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And but he's sort of come away from that oh, now. Oh, well, really well, interesting. He, I'll show you this quote like, you bought yesterday. They're both developed. They're both like developing together and it's just cool to see that, yeah, you've both got the same interests and now that you're doing this brand and... yeah. It's like a proud parent moment, you know. <laughs> <what I mean? laughs> no, but it's, you know, you can feel like that because yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, you're partially responsible for yeah, yeah. for it happening in a way, and um, all the greater good that you're gonna do in the world in the fashion, <laughs> hopefully, fashion space. Hopefully. But you know, I mean, it's yeah, it's exciting. The thing I'm very conscious of is like this sounds really cre cliche, but it's just true. It's how I work. It's just every day has to be some form of development and improvement because yeah. especially, you know, getting close to our release, it's it's short, you know, I mean, we haven't finalized the t-shirt and the trouser samples aren't even, they're not done or finalized yet. We've just got it. We've finished production and they're being shipped to us. The, 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 the knits. Um, yeah. But how many other 15 year olds, do you know, that can even talk like that? You, you, you designing a brand, you're sourcing the your factories, you it's, it's crazy. It is crazy. Like, I'd done a little bit of trying to make my own little brand in <laughs> lockdown and that was yeah that yeah obviously shit but <laughs> just the, some of the, the work that goes was there. it the was there was mate there. yeah but I just do too many things and don't concentrate yeah. on one but yeah like how intelligent you are like you can do the social media side if you really wanted to with your brand you do do, do yeah mate you're going to go a long way in life let's Thank put it you. that way and yeah. between both of you I think yeah, you're gonna you're gonna smash it. No, it's exciting. Yeah. And I'm just but glad anyway. to say that I put you. <laughs> <laughs> there should be some um, royalties. <laughs> no, like no, 20 no. Percent royalties. I, I, I know, I know if you both turn <laughs> into millionaires, you'll come to me. You, you'll look after me. <laughs> of course. What Thanks. about Clint's actually? We didn't speak about him. Oh, I, I haven't really seen too much about him, but he's so he's I see, I'm seeing it everywhere. Like his brand and yeah. So they're doing really well. Yeah. You fuck with their they're, stuff or because so I know at one point we, you really we yeah me, Ant and I were really big into it and we wore a lot of their stuff. Um, in terms of like, they're 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 really innovating and the really nice thing I like is that it's you know, they're not going too far out of the realms of of um, streetwear silhouettes, but they're they're kind of subtly developing and 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 changing and adapting from that. And I like how they're 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 as their brand. I call it like a brand silhouette. Like Cole Buxton has their own brand silhouette, but but the silhouette of of their brand to me is is very unique and not unique it's very it's very them and their colors are nice i love that have you seen their new shoes they've done the cream oasis i seen oh. the, what was the friends and family set that they did yeah it just had their names on it but it was the same shoe oh same shoe yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it was like it was like <coughs> oh, so, okay so the general release was exactly the same the as gr was the, the same just, but had, just their had their names on it, on it. Yeah. Oh, okay um, yeah but they've just shoe. done a cream pair and oh, they're just <coughs> unreal like i own i own the the T T L R T R L footprints. Are they black comf ones. Are they comfy shoe? They're, yeah, they're right. They're not uncomfortable. Um, but I just love the silhouettes and and I don't, there's footwear so hard to do. Yeah, yeah and, yeah. and to do successfully, I don't think you know, it's it's genuinely I think one of the hardest fashion pieces to to to. It's make hard to be original with shoes as well because it's so hard. A You're shoe, so you can't. To, yeah, yeah. To and the then the second people do try and do stuff completely differently it becomes slightly controversial like and Kanye with the foam runners yeah, and stuff I mean, like that Kanye's done a big I do want to talk about his release in a second as well because that's a thing I feel very strongly about but make to make a shoe is so expensive like moulds themselves yeah. are tens of thousands yeah, of yeah, pounds yeah, yeah, yeah. and so the, it, the barrier to entry is very high um, but no I mean they're doing unbelievably and they're going to open a store in London okay. which is really exciting what, um, what as a brand? Mm -hmm. Oh, Clint. Yeah, yeah, Clint. Oh, they are. Yeah, their stuff. Some, you know, I, this is the other thing I love, and I will say this: their stuff online will sell out and be out of stock, but they'll still have the stock in store, and that is what I love. That I love that because you know their old silhouettes they'll still keep and they'll still sell in store. Like their T T R okay. T L R T R L um, footprints are still in store. They're still selling them despite making new pieces, and a lot of brands will you know they'll make a, a sneaker model and then. They'll release it, come out of stock, then they'll do another one, but they'll forget about the first ones. But a lot of their old stuff, they keep doing, keep selling they in did, store. Um, did, they've done an archive, like, 
he he released all the shoes that he'd ever yes, made. Yes, as a and made them available again. Yeah. Um, and do you not like, think that takes away a bit of the exclusivity from no, the brand? No, because Clint's not like they're they're still they're still coming up and they're still not peaked yet. And so I think you know, um, you don't see enough of their 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 stuff around anyway. So I don't think it matters. That's not a big problem. And I love. I just it feels <laughs> it's so much more friendly the 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 idea of having all the stuff in store, um, but then you know everything still sells out online. I just I I really like that. Because it's still giving people the opportunity to, to buy the stuff. To get it for retail, yeah, yeah. Um, and and it and it em, there's an emphasis on the kind of in person things and and seeing people and. I love going into stores and yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you get like a feel of the brand and, for me, I think customer service is just as important as the product as well. Yeah. Cost not even service like the ex- customer experience is really that that important. similar yeah, sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all in, it just comes into one sort of. That's why we're trying to make a very conscious effort to try and be in retail and be as relevant as possible in person because not enough brands do that and no, a lot don't. of them just do drops and then do drops and then do drops and it's just so repetitive it's it, being being a retail is something i think we find quite important and it's something we're trying to do and we are going to do with with our collaboration with studio you touch with it happens what was you what was you going to say you wanted to touch on something as well um yeezy that was it Kanye. so for those who somehow don't know <coughs> Kanye did, um, obviously he's divorced from Adidas and he's now doing his, he's now doing his, um, his own brand. It's just called Yeezy, isn't it? Is it Yeezy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and he dreamt of this, of this world where he could sell his product for $20. And so he did as part of his release. So it's t-shirts, joggers, trousers, shoes. No, not shoes. I still ain't got my fucking shit either. Oh, you did get it. You got three months. Yeah, I ordered it. Well, some people in England have got it, but anyway, yeah, yeah. he, um, I was looking, a lot of people were getting the product and, and it was just a really poor quality. Bear in mind, look, he did 20, 20 million people. He did 20, no, it was a million in, um, in a million pieces. Right. And, and, and th- there were no so wash bad. tags. There were no so wash tags bad. on the clothes. So you couldn't know where they were made. So God knows where they were made and this port, I mean, I mean, I'm guessing it would be multiple factories, hopefully, but if it was one factory churning out a million units in two months, I mean, good on them. But, I think but, it, it, I think a lot of it's pre-order, isn't it? Because he's obviously took yeah, the money so I th- and I then think he's it, I think it, it was a pre-order, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and and he, if you look at, um, do, you, do you know what a pattern is in clothing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So with... Um, with a t-shirt pattern it was literally just a rectangle with a with an arm with sorry with, with a, with a, hole, with a head hole and i'm not even kidding and they sewed it together so it was it was it was one piece that was all connected and they sewed it together so normally with with a with a shirt pattern you've got the back and the front panel and you've got the sleeve panel yeah, so it's yeah, four yeah. separate panels yeah. that you sewed together this is one panel and they sewed it together the problem with that is it's it is a good thing because it's low waste because when you when you lay out when you um cut the pattern on the fabric it's low waste because you're not there on um you can fit the pieces together more easily, mm. um, but the other the other issue is that is you've got you've got less control over the fit and and the, the what happened. I was looking at this guy, um, I can't remember what he 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 he's called, but he uh, I Elliot, love him. Elliot Page. No, no, no. He he does garment development. He's okay. in Canada, but he was looking at this garment. <coughs> it looked like they basically chalked out the lines. Yeah, I'm yeah. not even kidding. I think chalked I might have out. even watched that video. Yeah, that yeah. You're talking and about. basically. Um, did it all by hand and cut the pattern normally you would finalize the pattern on a computer you would have a projector almost or you'd have a paper pattern that gets cut out and you cut it you would never draw it by hand you would never do it never because it's just you don't have the control you know each piece is different does it go back to like what we were saying earlier though with pushing the boundaries and something becoming controversial because it's not the norm because the stuff he's produced no but it's unacceptable that's not not normal No, what do you mean it, by the quality standard? Yes, I think you can make the argument that because it was $20, it was low risk, so people are fine. Like, they're not going to start crying. But it's still unacceptable. And Kanye, come on, like, people, you know, it was kind of his first release, so people were like, okay, give him slack, whatever. Kiss Kanye West. He has been partially responsible for the upbringing of, 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 of Virgil and and, Done massive and things, huge for Adidas. things with Nego and, and Adidas. And, like, he is, he's a big face of... of, of fashion yeah, even, yeah right yeah. and so to, to try and say that because it's his first thing that, that he needs to be cut some slack is rubbish yeah he's got a whole team rodeo, he's got it? the best people in the industry around him that should never be happening and i understand it's in order to cut costs but it's got these it's easy poor. pods as well 
Is they're they're interesting. It's very Kanye. Yeah. Interesting. Like again, in this, in what's the word? Innovating. Yeah. But size thing and was the sizing bad? Is it? I'm not really familiar. Three with sizes. It. Small, medium. Oh large. really? Yeah. So people are ordering a large and they're coming and they've got that much room at the front of the shoe and because I guess it's like a sock, right? So you can <laughs> yeah. stretch it, right? Um, and there that's is, really bad. Yeah, I just think. I didn't know that. But there's a lot of people that pay two hundred dollars for them. Because initially, initi yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's crazy. So how can you charge that and then go to? And did you see the actual advert that he made? Gee, I'm so Kanye. It's so Kanye. Oh, we spent twenty million dollars on this advert, so I'm having to record on my phone in my truck. <laughs> but it's like <laughs> go buy my it's, shit. <laughs> but it's such rubbish because I mean, look, it's it's he's a good marketer. And, and <coughs> I, I was, thought that was brilliant. I was talking to someone about this, and I can't remember who it was, but he is. He is a he. At the end of the day, he's not a designer. He's not. He's he's still an artist, but he's also an entertainer, and that's his main thing, I think. Okay, I've got a question. Go on. If you could, if Nike sat you down and and wanted you to create a colorway for a ninety-five or a TN, mm. what is what would you be your like ideal colorway to to dream? Ooh, that's a good question. That is. Um. I don't know, maybe I'd do... Because um... I know you've had your like customs in your time. You had the Bape TN customs. You had yeah. the Tiffany customs. Is there anything similar Do you know what it is, bro? I think... I don't know if I've got that like sort of create creativity to... Yeah, no, no, but I'm talking more about like your preference. Is there so a colourway Is there a colorway you've been waiting for that just has never come? Or maybe a concept... That you've seen floating about, but that you know isn't really just a bit more of a mock concept rather than. I think like an OG like this with a purple would be nice. A purple, yeah, yeah like a grey mm -hmm. sort of thing. So just a purple, 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 purple. Yeah, that, that would be really it. nice. Yeah. Um, and then a TN, if I could make my own, like a maybe an iridescent, because I know they did like a scarab one with like very similar to this but yeah. like uh, golds and yeah, yeah. reds I quite like that it's really nice so I'd maybe like a white iridescent with like pinks and purples in it that changes okay. in the sun almost like oil type kind of have you seen the new Jordan 4s have... hang on one second so you see this looks oh is that an actual shoe yeah it's a women's shoe that's come out but if you look at it it looks almost um, ultraviolet yeah it's got like that pink that's so thing. weird it looks like there's a blue light on it well, I'll show the camera. It's like so when you're in the sun, you sort of get that pinky purple. It, it's like an iridescent. So if they did a TN that was white and more of really like weird. a blue iridescence with a pink in it, I think that would on a Jordan be, Four or on a, no, on a TN. On TN. Yeah. I don't think we've ever seen that. Like we said, we've seen the scarab colorway, which is like a orangey, reddy brown. Yeah. But yeah, I think maybe a white iridescent with. Or they've just done the Deadpools. I think they could the go TNs. down. Yeah, the yeah. TN Deadpools, you know, the red fade yeah, yeah, into yeah, the black. Yeah. I think they could go down that line with so many different colours. Colours, yeah. yeah. They've done the pink recently, mm. the green, yep. like the aqua green. Yeah. But I think they could just keep going with that. Yeah. Are there any brands that you're seeing at the moment that are kind of um, coming up or starting to get more, more um, popularity Popular. that you think will become staples, if you like? Um, I don't know about staples, but um, I think um, Timeless, okay, the local Cambridge brand, they're from Cambridge. Like their marketing, what they're doing at the minute, um, is really, really good. Um, again, I stayed away from their stuff for quite a while because of the crotch logo. Yeah. Uh, but I've recently bought one of their tracksuits and it's comfy. What are they? They just have their logo on it. I'm not too familiar. Yeah. Um, they have like the timeless logo on the crotch and stuff mm. like that but they've started to release stuff without that now i think they're coming away from it so um i bought a couple of t-shirts socks track suits yeah decent quality yeah um washes well comfortable um and yeah i just really like what they're doing with their branding so they do like send us a video of you ripping up your pair of nike socks and they send okay. out you a pair of their socks similar to what cortez did with yeah similar jeans. sort yeah. of things yeah, yeah, yeah. similar sort of things but they're putting their own little spin on it and um Obviously, just being from Cambridge, just naturally. Have you seen? Have you met them before? 
or they quite I think mysterious. I have met him, but he's yeah, he's one of those. Okay, okay. he like come in and be like, oh, I was in your store last week. Like, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know so what I mean? Like, like like, Who are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they've said to be fair, we're doing a giveaway at the minute on some Jordan Four bread, so they said they're going to add some stuff to that as well, which is obviously great. What throwing some of their clothes? Yeah, for free yeah. for us. Um, yeah. Um, that merch or merch, I've seen a lot of their stuff. Um, but I just don't like the boxy stuff, man. I feel as though <laughs> if you lift, lift, lift your arms up and your items on your your, sol <laughs> your solar plex, yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't fit. Yeah. But obviously, it's the fashion. It's a preference thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's a fashion at and the And this, moment this, and this, like my generation at the moment, I'm, I'm very fond of that. I think. Of course, and, yeah. And I, I definitely, I think it's to do with the buzzword of like proportions, but it's true. It's like a classic term that's used in yeah, like, yeah, fashion yeah. styling where it's like, you know, rule of thirds. It's the same thing with anything with, with cameras, all that stuff. I think it looks, it can look good on certain people and yeah, it is what it is, but yeah. just obviously being a generational thing, it's not my thing. Um, same what with was, the... Can I, can I ask about this quickly? With, um, sorry, I cut you off. You're going to say something. That's fine. No. Um, <laughs> What was when you were younger, yeah. and I know the culture was very strong when you were younger with TNs and nine to fives and, and track suits and stuff like that. What was the reception in terms of like people wearing the same things? Because I know at the moment it's very shunned upon, like, there's a very strong feeling around you know all these kids who are like duplicates of each other. What's your was it a similar thing then, or was it because of social media? Was it less just the, there was, was no the social culture? media? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it was like you were saying earlier, people get accepted for what they like, it was just that, like. Mm. The big thing of fashion when I was young was like this, is it Gorp core that you call it now? Yeah. So it was at school, you wasn't anybody unless you had a pair of Rockport. Yeah. Um, they're like hiking boots, uh -huh. like 220 quid they was. And you took your school trousers into your Nike sock. <laughs> you'd have a pair of Rockport boots and then a coat. It was either Burghouse, Sprayway, yeah. North Face. Yeah. North Face was like the up and coming thing then. Was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the jacket's <laughs> like five, six hundred pounds. So Even go, then? Yeah, to go to school, okay. you'd need a two hundred pound pair of Rockport boots, yeah. a three to five hundred pound North Face coat. And it's just crazy. But like, it's like now we've got, well, two years ago, all the kids wanted Jordan 4s. Mm -hmm. um, but the fashion was just like tracksuits and Air Maxes, really. For me and the reception up. was like, you know just it was just normal like yeah. it wasn't you know because i i know definitely at the moment i think because coop coop is kind of the face of it so it's 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 evident but like the people get a lot of hate for wearing the same stuff and there's a big feeling on social media that being original is the only way to go and you know wearing your own stuff is just like, wear what you like it yeah, yeah, yeah what anyone else thinks if you like what's yeah. popular then wear yeah. what's popular yeah for me i think my fashion has gone and come back so mm -hmm. many times over the last 20 years yeah. like with t 95s and TNs are sort of back in at the minute aren't mm -hmm. they with certain mm -hmm. cultures and that Air Max is sort of becoming a thing again yeah um, and for me when I was younger I then went into the high end fashion the Prada the yeah. Armani which as many was people do a big thing when I was younger yeah. Um, yeah. Iceberg which I still love now. I don't know if you've ever seen their stuff, but it's like a high-end it Italian fashion brand. But they used to do collaborations with like Snoopy and Sylvester and <laughs> yeah, all the yeah, cartoon yeah. stuff, yeah. Um, which was massive when I was younger. Is that that Snoopy t-shirt that you have? Is that... No. Do you have a Snoopy... I feel like I've seen... Oh, it doesn't matter. I, I like don't think I have any of that. I'm no. old-school iceberg stuff anymore. And you just can't can't get it anymore. Yeah, yeah. So the vintage stuff's so expensive now. Yeah. Um... But it was very loud, like prints on the jeans, yeah. like the iceberg, the Versace prints on the... Yeah. And that sort of rave culture, um, mm -hmm. like that sort of stuff with 95s, TNs. We can talk about that actually with, you know, because it, it's... it. Uh, what people wear goes beyond just, you know, the trends in what people wear. It's also to do with, you know, the groups that identify with that and what people, you know, the people what they do like their interests like you know skate culture obviously yeah of course and, and i think where you grow up culture is definitely... where you grow up as well because yeah i think during the time of me growing up in london jordans were popular yeah um and they had like the academics coats and like the baggy jeans like replicating yeah. hip-hop culture yeah. sort of yeah. thing whereas a bit further up north it was a lot more the rave culture um there was a music called speed garage and four four that was massive and popular at the time yeah and that culture was sort of, yeah, your, your high-end designer. Yeah. 
what well, you probably wouldn't call high end fashion, but, <gasps> the but pra- it still is. The so designer brands, the Pradas, yeah. the yeah. the yeah. Gucci's, yeah. the that sort of thing was very popular. Um, and yet, as I've sort of grown out of that, I've sort of gone back to what I was with when I was younger, just like your general night comfy. Yeah, yeah. I'm old now, so <laughs> com- I do have I do have some of the pieces. Like I was saying earlier about Cortez, about I don't like it, but I've got certain pieces that are nostalgic to me. So like. There's a Dan headbutt tea. Yeah. You that moment. That. Yeah, because yeah, that moment just means so much to me watching that when I was growing up. And there's a cartoon, one where all the cartoons are fighting and they've got like 95s on. But that takes me back to when I was younger watching uh, Bugs Bunny cartoons and the Roadrunners okay. and yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even if I don't like a brand, but I like a piece they do, it won't You're stop me buying. from buying it yeah. because it just, yeah, as you it's get older, you like to... F- yeah remember and go back to the younger yeah. days and stuff that yeah. gives you fun memories and for me now i think i only own one pair two pairs of jordan fours i've got the my first ones ever bought with the fire reds yeah and then the reimagines and i'm gonna get the industrial blues because they've all got the re- are those the reimagined yeah black and then the industrial blues because yeah. they've got the nike air on the back mm-hmm. and i do really like classic colorways they've got mm-hmm. meaning behind them they've been out before yeah but i'm sort of getting rid of all of the stuff that i don't wear and i've just got caught up in the the hype to then reinvest in the money when I'm selling it and going back and getting like this pair here, 2012 London, um, a London pack. So I wore these from 2012. Every time England play football, I put these wow. on. Wow, every year? Every year. Probably shouldn't because we fucking lose everything. <laughs> but yeah, you got the London inside there. Yeah, You've cool. obviously got the St. George's flag on, yeah. the, on the front. So yeah, going back and getting stuff like that, the OG Neon stuff that I've missed over time and stuff that I actually put on and it will give me a nostalgic mm, feeling mm, and stuff like that. Mm. So I think you need to stay true to yourself and not get caught up in fashions yeah. and trends. And yeah, that would be my advice. Be true to yourself. Wear what you want. If you like something, don't care about what other people think. Yeah. Just be happy. Yeah. What is your... Um what is your view on on young people spending lots of money on like designer and you know the likes of Canada Goose and Balenciaga speedruns, whatever they're called and all the <coughs> slightly obscure high-end fashion that is just kind of um, identifies with maybe the wrong group it comes down to again to like kids try, wanting to try and fit in I think if you're in a group of friends that uh, let's say the traveling community for example yeah. the younger kids of those are still they sort of love all that high-end mm-hmm. fashion the high end but I think it sort of puts pressure on the parents then to to keep their kids up with it. And it's not important. No. I know as that that kid might feel it's, it's yeah. important to yeah. fit in and stuff like that. But it's not important, man. It's not important. And I think um if you can afford that stuff and you like it, then yeah, but I just I think a lot of these kids see it as the be all and end all. If I haven't got that item, I'm mm-hmm. not gonna be cool and I'm not gonna be this, I'm not gonna be that. Just be yourself and yeah, you'll be accepted by yeah. people with like the, these things are not they're just material things. And yeah. I think when people realise for me the most important thing in life for me is my family and my children mm. and being healthy and watching them grow up. So for me, as long as I've got all that, that's more important to me than all the money in the world. Yeah. So it's just yeah, mm. finding what's important to yourself. Just be yourself and be happy with what you got, I suppose. Yeah. But being young it's hard to understand that i suppose so i don't know it's a funny funny time being young especially in this kind of climate where there's so much pressure on not pressure but the the um the norm is to buy really expensive clothes peer pressure isn't it really partly and 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 but it's like subconscious peer pressure Mm. like it's it's like people um are it, it becomes a battle to almost kind of fit in almost mm. um but i think that's but, in there at your own head yeah like you yeah. think you need that to fit in but actually you really don't no <laughs> how about you how do you feel about that that sort of thing um um because I, I know you don't you obviously you wear what you want yeah you don't really care about what people i mean think i i don't i still sometimes get can get affected by what people say okay or whatever like some sometimes you know at like school like a home clothes day or something and i'll wear you know my stuff and mm. there'll be a lot of unnecessary tension on me okay. um and i don't get upset about it but i just find it a bit frustrating because there's a lack of acceptance yeah 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 um but i think i i feel hang on i've got loose i've i feel um 
strongly about um, w- when kids wear designer items that aren't really that nice because I think again it's the kind of fitting in thing but also if you're going to spend lots of, like lots and lots and lots of money on you know Canada Goose coats when you know <coughs> when Canada Goose is made for like you know Arctic weather and it's not it's not it's not it's not cold really in the UK and and stuff that's slightly unnecessary and you're spending all this money on it I don't think it's worth it and I get it I get it but I think if if you truly feel fat passionate about if you're going to spend lots of money on clothes i think this is my view i think you should feel very passionate about um about the, the clothes and have an appreciation for them rather than just going because and getting of the badge. What, yeah exactly and that's that's the issue i have with people who wear like canada goose and stuff like that and i, I understand that it's it's the trend and it's part of the culture but <laughs> canada goose is a like it's a it's a it's a it's a world-renowned quality uh, Arctic exploring 100%. brand, hundred percent. And and the I mean, look, Canada Goose are, are re- they've got loads of money, but the, what happens is is the brand the brand name gets ruined, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's defamation. Yeah, <laughs> obviously, it's not you know you can't go ahead and sue the the kids for wearing them, but. But it comes it's back it's to a, um. Sorry to interrupt, but like what I was saying when we was young, the three to five hundred pound north face yeah, yeah. There, again it's arctic yeah. waterproof it's jackets kind of that you don't need yeah. but it, it's the fashion mm. but what i will say about these real expensive items is if you take care of them they'll last you a lifetime oh for sure and you only yeah. have to buy that item once yeah. so like for me armani jeans i've got a pair of armani jeans i've had for like 14 years and okay. they're still wearable yeah yeah they're still soft yeah. they're still nice so i will defend the price of some of these products because I feel the quality that they are, they do last. Some of them. A very, yeah. yes, not all of them, mm-hmm. but a lot of them will last you a very long time. So if you looked at a coat you're going to wear for 10 years and you're paying a thousand pounds for it, for me, that's worth it because you're paying a hundred pounds every winter. And for if, you, that if, coat. You, if you look at your cost per wear, it'll be yeah. like 20p. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. Um, but <coughs> I suppose maybe <coughs> the argument I'm trying to make is that for kids, they. You know, we're naturally we develop and go on and off things very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, if you're going to spend a thousand pounds on a coat that you're going to have for two seasons, is it worth it? Probably not. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I agree. But, but I, you know, I, it just is. It is what it is. It's part of. It's part of what. Um, again, it goes back to the culture thing. Culture is such a strong thing, and you know, there are negative and positive parts of of, of different cultures. But at the end of the day, they they are what makes up culture. Right. Well, that was that was a a podcast filled with tangents and like it was <laughs> there wasn't much of a topic to this podcast, but it's the best way to do it though. Sometimes, mate, just start yeah. talking and let it just branch off naturally yeah, and 100%. go into little things. But yeah, thank you for sharing all that with us. Of course. And obviously, we will follow your journey with Ant and give people <laughs> updates and stuff. But like you just said, it'll be good to when he's finished all the stuff he's doing. Uh, get us all in and have a catch up and yeah, have a chat. Yeah, because I think the people miss you, mate. Miss you <laughs> both. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know about that, but, <laughs> but I think look, oh, I definitely it's, do. Anyway. It's nice to have a sit down and talk about stuff and um, and it's not. Yeah, I mean, I hope if you if you come this far in the podcast, then I don't know what we can do. Give them some Thank stalk. you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> come in store, give you a free key ring. <laughs> put like a okay. I, I this is what I'll say. If you've come this far, put in the comments, put a um, lightning bolt emoji, and then we'll know that you're you're a real one and you're a true supporter of Flans Kicks. And if you come in the store, you'll get patterned up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you so much for watching. You should probably do the outro because I'm not. You do it, go on. Thank you for watching, guys. <laughs> we appreciate all of you. Um, and if anybody's got any suggestions of stuff you want to see us talk about, any people you want to see on the podcast, tag them down below, leave comments down below. Because we are doing this for you at the end of the day, guys. So let's uh, get some comments of what you want to see and make it happen. Perfect. Sweet.